Welcome to our demo of Boomerang's parent mode. In this overview, we will show you the iOS version. Parents with Android devices can also enjoy many of the same controls, but it doesn't include this new redesign shown here. It's coming really soon. And one more note, our parent mode is currently free for both Android and iOS parent devices. We will be reviewing what can be controlled from our parent mode for both an Android and an iOS child device. On the daughter's iPad card, I will tap on Manage Device. This brings me to a new screen where I can review the location, device screen time settings, and reports. On the location card, if you want to refresh the location, here's a tip. You can tap Refresh Location, but don't expect an instant refresh. Why? because we're actually sending a push notification and notifying your child to check in. Once they manually check in, then the location will be updated. Now, on devices that have cellular connectivity all the time or are actively connecting to a Wi-Fi network, we will grab the location updates every so often. Our device screen time card is quite popular with parents, especially our timeout feature. I really love that one and I use it all the time. Here, parents can also change the schedule. So the device screen time schedule is typically set up in the onboarding, but many times parents may want to tweak the end times for the weekends or for school days. So here you can easily change them, change the from time to the to time, and pick the days you wish to apply these blocks of time. It's quite flexible and it will also apply immediately. Now the only catch again with an iOS child device is these changes require that your child's device is connected to an active internet connection. If it's not, we will actually notify you inside our card device here to tell you if the schedule is applied or not. Applying a timeout is very simple. Tap timeout, set a duration, and watch your child's device get timed out. When successful, we will also show you how much time is left in this timeout. If the timeout did not apply successfully, we will also inform you. Keep in mind that an active internet connection is required at all times for these commands to work properly. Our grant access now function works two ways. The first way is to override the schedule. So it may happen on a weekend where you want to add additional time to your child's schedule screen time. This is where the grant access now function works quite well and it will not override your schedule. It will just do a temporary chunk of time that you set. It can also override a timeout. So if you've by accident selected a two hour timeout and you want to override it, you can use the grant access now to override that timeout. Our last card for an iOS device is the reports card. Here you're able to review the apps that are currently installed on your child's device. This will give you their icon and their name. Our SpinSafe browser also shares its web history with Boomerang. Here, parents can review the browsing history and any sites that were blocked during their child's browsing. And lastly, the events area is primarily for troubleshooting and more for advanced checking of what's going on. A couple of scenarios are exact information of apps that were newly installed or removed, and as well, when was the device blocked and unblocked via our scheduled screen time. One more area we can review is the advanced device settings that you access via the extra menu on the top right hand side. Here parents can tweak the age ratings for content. You can review if you want the App Store or the iTunes Store to be allowed or even block in-app purchases. And you can control device specific things like the camera or the FaceTime app. Any changes made on this screen will apply immediately to your child's device. So if it's currently offline, these changes will apply when it comes back online. So this covers the main functions we have right now for an iOS child device. Let's move on to reviewing the Android child device experience. Just like our daughter's iPad, I'm going to go to the daughter's tablet and tap on Manage Device. Primarily the cards are all the same except we have an additional one called Manage Apps. And on the device screen time settings, we have an additional option called Today's Daily Limit. We will cover that in detail shortly. 
Location updates on an Android device are almost instant. We do not require your child to tap a notification to refresh the location. Once you tap refresh location, as long as your child's device has an internet connection, we will refresh it automatically here. You can also make the device ring if you choose to, in case you've lost it in the house somewhere. On the device screen time, the today's schedule option is identical to our iOS schedule. You change the blocks of time that you want your child's device to be available and they apply immediately. Back to the device screen time card, we can also edit the daily limits you've set. Just use the sliders left to right and pick the right amount of time for each daily limit. We can also time out devices just like the iOS device for a duration that you choose. One difference is the extend time does two things as well, but a little bit differently. Here, when we extend the time and the schedule is up, we will also extend the schedule, just like we do on iOS. But we will also add time to the daily limit during a schedule. So if during the day your child has used up their one hour of time, but the schedule is still good till 9 p.m., you can add additional time by extending the time. Our Manage Apps card allows parents to review and control the currently installed apps on their child's Android device. Here they can allow, block, and add any app to the Always Allowed list. The Always Allowed feature is unique to Boomerang. This is where apps are added to the child's Boomerang dashboard inside the app. So when you open Boomerang on the child's device, you'll notice these shortcuts to these apps that are always allowed. Again, these apps will not count down the time when they are used. The App Groups tab shows parents two more options. Here we block all web browsers by default, so only Spin is allowed. And we also block newly installed apps. So apps that are installed from the Play Store or any other source will be blocked instantly. Parents will be notified and parents can make the call on if the app is appropriate or not and unblock it from our parent mode. Our reports card for an Android device is quite detailed. A very popular feature of our reporting is the app usage. Here we provide you a breakdown of individual app usage on a daily basis for up to 30 days. So parents can really get an idea on what's going on, on what apps are being used, and have a discussion around what is good use and what is not. We also provide you a always allowed list of apps so that you can see if they're spending time on educational apps as well. And just like our iOS device, we can also review the Spin Safe browser history, both for the history and the blocked websites. Unique to Android child devices, we're also able to grab the call logs and the text message logs. Here you'd be able to review this in the reports. For this demo, I don't actually have content to show you, but you'd be able to review who called your child, who your child called, who texted your child, and who your child text. We also show you the content of flagged messages here. So if there's inappropriate keywords in a text message, we will show them in here as a log. A unique feature to parental controls is with Boomerang, it has the ability to grab the YouTube app history. Parents can then review videos viewed and searches performed inside the app. This is quite powerful and very, very popular with our users, especially with the fact that it is the number one most used app across all of our users in time. And lastly, just like the iOS device, we have an events area. It's a little bit more detailed on the Android side, but it's primarily to troubleshoot and check into things. We've also added an advanced area for Android child devices in our parent mode. Here, parents can enable the required password for uninstallation. This makes it very difficult to remove our app. And we also have a tip for the YouTube app. Some parents like the fact that the YouTube app itself can add a restricted mode. And this mode filters some of the bad content on YouTube, but kids can easily go back into settings and change that setting. Here by enabling this YouTube setting, parents can actually block access to the YouTube app settings once they enable the restricted mode. Again, another very unique feature related to the YouTube app. And one more thing, parents can now set a passcode via our settings menu. So this eliminates the scenario where kids were extending their own screen time via their parents' device. Yes, we had that feedback and thank you for sharing it with us. Well, this concludes our demo of our parent mode for iOS devices. 
If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment below. We'd love your feedback. And if there are other scenarios or content you'd love us to cover here on our YouTube channel, please let us know below as well. Thanks.